So the first thing I do whenever I pose my character is to really just take the cog and move it. So just by translating it already, we are starting to have a, a, the beginning of a line of action. Next thing is I want to rotate it also, and I'm going to push that line here. Then remember I talked about twisting the body a little bit. If I look at my character from side view here, it looks pretty flat, you know, and that never really looks good. And so usually, you know, I would give it a little bit of a twist, a tiny bit, you know, we don't have, we don't need to go all the way there. You know, it's still for the camera. So now I know that I'm starting with a strong core. My cog has moved to the side. So I'm already deciding where his weight is going to be. And I'm avoiding straight lines. If you look at these horizontal lines, you know, they're not horizontal. That's because I rotated my cog. And if you look at, if you're looking at these lines here, the lines of the side of the spine, they're not straight vertical because I rotated the cog. Usually I like to feel that my character is actually able to support his weight. And right now with the both feet, you know, directly under his, his, um, his, his, his leg like this and completely aligned, I don't really feel that. So I will just, just go in there and moving this one a little bit on the side so that that way, you know, I'm just spreading the feet so that he can have a better stance and a better weight on them. So now the next thing I like to do is to push a little bit of the hips in there so that I can start to get a better feeling that this leg is actually more straight. Here, I'm also taking the knee and move it a little bit on the side so that the knee is pointing more towards where the toes are pointing. So we would do the same thing for this one here. You see just the fact that I'm moving the knees, the knees a little bit here, it's also adding a little bit of depth, a little bit of volume to the leg so that they're not completely flat, so that they're not completely just one dimensional thing. Next thing I wanna do is to go with the spine. And usually the spine, you know, I like to start with the tree at the same time, just because it's gonna be way easier to keep a better flow in the spine. You know? at, all, at all time, you want to make us believe that the spine is connected to the hips. So you want to keep a, a sort of relationship between them. You don't want to go with the spine and, and bend it like crazy while the hips are staying very quiet. Or same thing with the different blocks of the spine. You don't want to have one completely twisted while the other ones are not very twisted. So the thing I, I like to, to think of is you see here, this line that I'm creating with the, with the spine, with the, with the hips here, I kind of want to continue that a little bit. This here, so like those, and probably go back in here a tiny bit. Trying to do is to really have a nice line. So from there, you know, if I want to rebalance him, I can just go in here and move him a little bit more in there. I want to then push the different parts of my spine. And here, I feel that I might be going a little too far. So I'm going to reduce that a tiny bit. So now I'm going to play a little bit with the, the head in here to rebalance the pose. Because right now the head is rotated with the spine. And already if you go for this, you know, and, and rebalance the head a little bit, it's going to feel like the character is going to be more comfortable in there. I don't like having so much of the neck um, sticking out. And that's also why I like to show you that, you know, you don't have to play with the neck at all time. You know, you could just translate the head. The way I do it, the way I like to do it is by pressing Alt and the arrow keys. It's really, you know, helping you to just move by one pixel. Get a little closer to my body in here in terms of neck because it feels more natural. Then from there, I can do the arms. And you can see that here, if I go down with my arm, just like this, I'm losing a little bit of the, the volume of the arm there. That's usually when I go in there in the shoulder and just take it out a tiny bit more so that I'm getting a little bit more volume. So here I would just take the arm down and then here I would kind of go for kind of a neutral, natural pose, you know, just a starting pose that's going to feel okay. And here I'm going to rotate my hand so that I, I don't have this. You know, if, if you look at the hand here, that's ugly. That's just a thin line in there. So I'm, I'm always trying to keep a little bit of volume so we could have a little bit of that here. And I'm always breaking a little bit of the, 
of the wrist so that it doesn't feel like it's one big line with, uh, with the forearm. Then next thing I, I wanna do here is to relax the fingers a little bit, especially you know, with this character, the fingers are just big and, and ugly and they're the octopus and then the thumb. I'm gonna relax it also. And then from there, you know, now that my, my hand is posed pretty much, I can just give it a tiny bit more space you know, for, the, for that negative space in there. And you can see that here, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a tangent in here with that, with that leg, but I worry not at the moment because I want to move the, the anchor point of this leg. I want to move it a little bit more on the side here so that I have the feeling that the, the leg is still attached to the hips. You know, it's, you know, I could go for something like this where I keep, I, I go away from the negative space here and I would pay attention not having, you know, the tangent between the fingers and the, and the leg in there. So probably just more something like this. You know, that could feel okay, could feel readable in there. Or I would have to take my hand and my arm out to go out of the leg. But I like, you know, having this hand in front of the leg and this one not in front of the leg. Nice thing I like, I like to do is to give a bit of weight to my shoulders. So I would just have them go down a tiny bit, just so that, you know, I have more room if I need to raise them up. Next thing I want to do is to pay attention to the face because the face is going to be what the audience is looking at. And if you look at it from, you know, from here, it looks like the eyes are just spread apart, you know, they're not looking good at all. So usually that's the first thing you, you kind of want to go and, and, and correct that. But here, you know, as my character is going to be seen from the side, I'm not going to narrow the eyes, I'm going to design the look. And usually the way that I, I like to do is you see here, if he's looking, let's say he's looking at, at the right of the screen, I'm going to take, take the eyes and make sure that they actually really look. So already here, you no, know, we are clarifying the intention of the character, you know, is looking at the side. I like to go in there and take the, um, take the eyelids and move them down a, a tiny bit, just so that I have the feeling that the eyes are not completely surrounded by white. A little bit closer here and have them touch eye a little bit here. And then the lower eyelids, I like to have them in a tiny, tiny, tiny bit so that if I use them, it doesn't look like they pop out of nowhere. Last thing I like to do is to think about the asymmetry in the face a little bit. The way that we like to design faces is to open the face towards where the, the character is looking or, or talking and stuff like that. So usually, you know, if you go for, for something like this here, he's clearly looking on the side here, okay? He's looking that way. So the way that we'll design it is we'll go for something that we call a cone. So that's gonna be something like this here because we want the audience to be looking there. We will design the, the, the mouth to kind of go into, into this and the eyebrows to kind of go into this too. The cone you know, of the character will lead the audience into looking at where we want them to look. The other principle in here is this squash and stretch of the face. We're adding asymmetry and we're not adding asymmetry randomly. We're adding asymmetry with squash and stretch in mind. So the idea is that this eyebrow is lower and this corner of the mouth is higher. This creates a little squash feeling. The fact that it feels like, you know, this part is squashed together. Well, this eyebrow is higher and the corner of the mouth is lower. So this creates the feeling that we have a, a stretch on this side. So we're going to just go for a little bit of that here. I'm gonna raise the eyebrow, probably just go for something like this. Keep it simple, you know, we don't want to go too crazy in here. And in the mouth, I'm gonna do a little bit of the same thing so that we're getting something that's gonna be even more interesting in here and just keeping that little smile here. So you see here now, you know, I have a pose that feels pretty relaxed. And even though, you know, we're not, um, we, we haven't really changed the, the emotion that he has at the beginning, it feels more like the character is, has been designed and is there, is present in the scene. That's really, you know, what goes into um, the thinking when I'm starting a pose.